Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. The season is spring. I've been waiting to hit the peak of the Oklahoma spoonbill season. Today's show is a case of the moving brush pile. Ladies and gentlemen, it's morning number three of spoonbill season in Oklahoma. I only bought a seven day permit. I only tagged in one fish for the year. And I got time for one more. So we came down here on cloudy morning and got another contact. In Cook Inlet, Alaska, if you hook into a great big halibut, they say it's kind of like reeling in a barn door. Here in northeast Oklahoma, this river will tie into a spoonbill paddlefish. Feels like you've hooked into a brush pile. So we're going to get this brush pile up to the boat. See if it's got fins. A big old spoonbill nose on it. See what we got to work with. Hasn't made a run here for a little bit, so I'm going to loosen this drag and prepare for just about anything. Keep it over here so we get a look at this thing. Oh, there we go. I think he likes the color of this boat. <laughs> this is a releaser. <clears throat> We're out here looking for something really big today. And there's some people never get to catch a fish this big in their whole life, but we're gonna let this one go and try to get a bigger one. figure out how to get this guy loose. Got a double hook there, look at that. Well. Let's see if I can get this with the pliers. I think it's wrapped all the way around. doing just fine. All right, that gets us started this morning. I have to do another half hitch around this hook to keep it right in line with the line. But uh, that's our spoonbill that we're after. And I'm after one really big, so is Sean. And uh, so by tying it this way, it keeps the hook kind of right in line with the, uh, with the weight. Try to get another one. You're on season chasers. Thanks for coming on. Well, it's spoonbill season. It's thunderstorm season. It's turkey season. And it's mushroom season all at the same time. And it just now started thundering, or we wouldn't have had these lines out like we have right now, but it's brought us a little luck in the meantime. And Sean and I have had just a couple of bumps right in this section of the 
the river. We're just above I-44 on the Osho River, Grand Lake of the Cherokees, northeast Oklahoma. And we're pulling these treble hooks behind the boat with about a four ounce weight today. We got another moving brush pile. And of course I had about 50 yards of line out. It takes a while to get where you can even see these. I hear the turkeys gobbling over in the woods. That's definitely a gobble. They gobble when it thunders. We've noticed that they seem to fight the most when you get them close to the boat. Pretty good one, doesn't it, Rob? Feels like the best one I've ever had. <laughs> they all are the best one. I've released one today already. He's in the boat. Yeah, you don't like. Fighting fair now. Fighting fair. He's in the boat. What you got, Rob? Well, we saw some uh, fish on the graph. And I got a hit, and Sean said to make this one count, and the way I count, this is number three. <laughs> and when we were getting the boat stopped, we did see it jump out of the water, and it looked like kind of a good one. Got this spoonbill a little closer to the boat. I must have had 50 yards of line out. He's getting up here close. I'm going to loosen this drag because he's going to make another run here in a minute. He's under the boat here. I'll try to pull him back. And this is usually when they like to thrash around a bit. This is a spoonbill. Light drag, I'm gonna thumb it a little bit, but I'm not gonna let him burn me. <laughs> These are big fish, and that's it's probably some of the biggest freshwater fishing action that you can find. You gotta go clear to the Gulf of Mexico or Pacific Ocean or somewhere like that to get consistently large fish like this. And here we are in northeast Oklahoma. Runs here. I think he's a little bigger fish. It's a bigger fish, but it's still not my 6 0. Pretty sure. And it's a good one. Well, we got to figure out what to do with it. That's a bigger fish. Think? Yeah, I think that's a 35, 40. Yeah, what we're after. This is a paddlefish. That's a good one. That's 40. They're all good. That's a 40 pound fish there, bud. Here, it's almost to my chin. <laughs> nice one, but we're looking for something bigger. We've got one more to take for the year. 
We'll get this one in the water, get them upright. As you can see, they got a really large mouth. And that's what they do is sift nutrients out of the water. Somebody said it's like swimming around with a five gallon bucket open. But uh, this one's smooth on the top. Pretty interesting fish, maybe 35, 40 pounds. I think it's okay. And there it goes. Woo! Okay, Sean, it's your turn. I'll run the camera if you catch one. And I uh, think there's more in here. I would have kept that one. You would have kept that one? I would have kept that one. All right. Well, there's more to be had. And stay tuned, and we'll be right back with you here on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA, resulting in unexpected power and agility. Introducing the all-new, all-powerful Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi-link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of Gator. It's chick days at Blue Ribbon Farm and Home in Pittsburgh. All the chicken supplies you need to get started. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has what you need to feed the wild birds. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has what you need to plant a beautiful garden. Seeds, plants, fertilizer, and weed control for your lawn. Don't forget Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has a huge selection of food for dogs. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat, and this is the goofy goat right here. We're here at the gun counter today at John Sports Center, and we're talking to Rod. And today, our gun of the week is a muzzleloader, a black powder rifle. And, uh, these, these things have come a long way since the first one of these I saw go off a couple of years ago. And uh, show us some of the, uh, the new ones. This is a, what, a Thompson Center? This is a Thompson Center Icon. It is a brake action muzzleloader. Uh, one of the beautiful things about this rifle is that it has a removable breech plug, which aids in the cleaning of this rifle. It inserts in such a manner, quarter turn, and it'll lock up and close like this. Not only does it make it easier for cleaning, but like any other muzzleloader, you load from the breech, break it open, it takes a 209 shotgun primer as a firing mechanism, you close the breech, and it's fairly watertight. I'm not going to say it's waterproof, but it's a little tighter than what we used to do. Muzzleloaders basically were unchanged for hundreds of years, and about 20 years ago when uh, they started offering special hunting seasons for muzzleloader for deer season. Uh, innovation became a reality and uh, the uh, modern ma muzzleloading manufacturers picked up the ball and ran with it and innovation has, they've just came such a long way in the last 20 years. Well, this Thompson Center has an all-weather stock and it's got a um, uh, really nice, look like all-weather barrel. That is correct. And uh, these can be customized uh, with all kinds of accessories now. Uh, it's legal to dress them out with scopes and what all else can you put on these? The scopes are a, a big to do. Uh, they are made specifically for muzzleloaders now. They are coming uh, built in range finder or uh, the Nikon BDC, the bullet drop compensating reticle inside is either it comes in a 250 or a 300 yard reticle. So 300 yard shots are doable uh, and they're designed for that. Other things, of course, your slings and there's just, there's a plethora of muzzleloading accessories for these. And that's one of the big draws is that it is a very accessorizable item. And we as being the hunters that we are like accessories. It's, you can use the black powder grains, but now they've got the, um, the little capsules here that you can measure it out just right. That's right. Um, Hodgson Corporation makes what they call the Pyrodex pellets. Uh, muzzle loaders will, can use either two or sometimes three of these. It's a 50 grain increment. 
So you can be 100 or a 150 grain powder charge. Uh, the projectile you use is a sabot or sabot, depends on how you want to pronounce that, and a, uh, a pointed uh, nozzler type bullet. You insert that and then once you drop your pellet down the barrel, you would put this in, push it all the way down, and then this is the 209 shotgun primer we were talking about. Very small device. That has come a long way and it's been a great innovation in this market. All right, so if you need uh, information on uh, uh, black powder, come talk to Rod or any of the guys here at John Sports Center. Ask for the gun of the week, and they'll have you ready for muzzleloader season before you know it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If you'd like more information on the gun of the week or any of the other guns in stock or for special orders, Stop by John Sports Center at 18th and Broadway in Pittsburgh for more information. And tune in to Season Chasers next week for next week's Gun of the Week from John Sports Center. Well, Rob has the lucky chair today. That's four in a row and he's better just... Better be careful or I may not get a ride home. He's just been hot, on fire. And that's a good fish, obviously. He's not done yet. It's in the tail. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. I thought it was a bigger fish. It's, well, it's not a bad fish, but it's in the tail. That makes it pull even harder. I think we're going to take Rob's fishing pole away from him. He's just killing us. <laughs> but that's a good thing. At least somebody's catching him. That's a bigger fish. Look at the size of that tail. Gets that traction and then he wants to go deep. Trying to keep those back wheels out of the water. Okay. Oh. Hey, I thought you had him. I've got him. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of a challenge getting him loose. They need some help from the lander on this one. That's a big fish. That's plus 40. That might be a 50. I believe it is a 50. Will you criticize me if I release a 50? No. <laughs> but I'm going to take your pole away from you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I guarantee if I catch a 50, it's coming home. This one does have some tail girth to it. Look here. That's a big fish. Ooh, this might have to be a... Let me get this one. That's a 50. That is a big one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good fish. We need to weigh it. Okay, we just boated number four here. Or my number four. And uh, there's a bigger fish. We're going to see how big it is, but I, I'm still looking for something just, just a little bit bigger. And uh, we know this is a good day. I'm going to try to get an idea how tall this one is. I hold it up. Oh, it's almost my chin to the floor. Let's see here. Try to hold it up just a little better. Almost to my chin. But it's still, what do you think? I think it's 60 plus. You think it is? I really do. But. It does have some girth there. I can't get my hand all the way around. I mean, that's a bigger fish. That is. All right, Sean, you talked me into it. Well, I mean, it's up to you, Bubba, but <laughs> I don't, I hate to see you throw that one back because that's a nice fish, but go ahead. You know, we got all we got all the time in the world. What time is it? It's only ten o'clock. It's early, and it seems like this is holding the bigger fish right in here. Let's get a bigger one. I may regret this. I mean, that is a nice fish, Rob. I'm gonna I'm, get it in. This is a good spawner. We got to get some scales. It does have some girth to it. I couldn't get my hand all the way around the tail. Back up here. 
See here? Couldn't get my hand all the way around on the tail, but let's get this one revived. We didn't have it out of the water very long, and it was a tail hook, so it's not in a vital area. This one should release just fine. I think there's more in here. I think it's my turn. <laughs> there she's going. There she's going. Woo! <laughs> that's a good feeling. All right, that's a good fish. We caught several. If the day ends right now, I've had a good day, but I really think there's something bigger in here. And uh, I'm going to keep my last spoonbill tag open until then. And uh, may regret that, but hey, that's a chance we take when we go fishing. It's 100% real here during spoonbill fishing season on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. Well, we're down at the I-44 bridge. And Sean's got a pig on. What do you think about this? Got him wrapped up, it looks like. Pretty good sized fish, finally. Took me a while. He's a big one. He's rolled a couple times there. Alright, how are we going to do this one? I think. I think that's one with the, uh, get the duct tape out on this one, don't you think? Yeah, really nice. Well, Sean's been real patiently all day around the camera. He's been ready to catch something for quite some time. So let's just get this one in the boat. Oh yeah, this is Bulldogging him in the boat. <laughs> oh, he's bigger than the one yesterday. 50, I'm guessing. Think 50? Yep. Doesn't matter, it's a really good one, whatever it is. He's a keeper. We'll get the duct tape out on that one. Yes, that's what we were waiting on, anyway. Two. So how's the uh, tail size on it as far as getting your hand around it? Huge. Can't get your fingers together on that. That's right. That's right. I it's think like that was worth waiting on. Yes, sir. Good job. Thank you. It's hard to keep fishing like this a secret. Sean's keeper weighed 52.4 pounds. And while Sean takes this one to the research center, Jason drives down to meet us at the ramp. We've got just a little more time to catch our last keeper or maybe some more catch and release in Oklahoma. Here. One. This is this is a keeper for me. I can tell by the girth of its tail. I'd appreciate it if you'd wear it out a little more before we... Look at that. Oh, I should have saw you. <laughs> Here's what we got. <laughs> Almost chin high. Not quite. I think there's some more in here, Jason. Yeah. He's fine. Or she's fine. <laughs> we haven't gotten a mile away from the boat ramp. Jason's hooked up again. This time I think he's got a good one on. This might Could be the be. this might be the best one he's Maybe ever had on. <laughs> How many times have we said that today? I don't know. This is a good fish. It seemed like it was pretty big. I'm quite sure of it. This is, uh, he's got the Spoonbill Master. This is a nine foot rod with 65 pound line on it. And I guarantee you there's a big old chunk on the end of it. This is 
the Oklahoma pole bender right here. And we know this is a really good one because he jumped right when he hit. And here we go. This one's bigger. Definitely bigger. There's some girth on this. You got a good hook set on it. Look at that gut on that one. Oh, I don't know. I... That's that's gonna be hard to top. <laughs> well, let's see if we can get it in, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I hate to be done. That's awful fun just to snag them and, and fight something that's that big. It's over. Probably close to 50 pounds. Uh, it's just a treat to be able to do something like this. Oh, it spanked me. <laughs> this fish has a rough surface on the top of its head right here. Yeah. Where these bumps are. receptors or whatever mm -hmm. you can feel these right here around the eye and around the head and that means that this is a female fish a male fish will be smooth right here and uh, since this is a nice big breeding female uh, I think I'm gonna throw this one back and uh, keep fishing because uh, She's in real good shape. We didn't hurt this fish at all, and uh, we need a lot more of these uh, in the future. So uh, we'll sacrifice a few pounds for a few uh, smaller fish. So let's throw this one back. But that was a lot of fun. So that's a 50 pounder. Easy. Waka waka. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows outdoors, wildlife and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides. Study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.